Good morning. 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 Yes, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Morning, morning. Nice to have you guys with us on Thursday Devotion. Um, I don't know, but every time we hear about that song, we are nearing home. I don't know how, how your heart feel, but my heart filled with joy knowing that we are nearing home. All signs are around us telling us that this thing is wrapping up. You know, it, it's not a cliche anymore. You know, that we're always saying that Jesus is soon to come. But everything around us is telling us something is happening and Christ is soon to come. Let us make our calling and election secure, friends. Let us make sure that our walk with Christ is even drawing closer and closer. Because, you know, you make a mention there, you say that my sheep hear my voice and not another will they follow. And the only way that we can hear his voice and to know it is by spending time with him. So especially in this time, friends, let us try to have a closer walk and talk with God, spend time in his word, that when he called us, that we could be able to hear his voice and to follow him. He recommend us, he, he consider us as to be sheep. And he is our shepherd. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's very important that, you know, that we are um, at this point of earth history, that we, Christ, allow every situation that is taken around us, everything that is taking place, really to draw us closer to him. We might ask ourselves, well, what is this? This is what a loving God does. So this morning, we really want to thank Sister, even Sister um, Charlene being with us. My sister-in-law is here this morning. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm so happy to have her with us. I want to invite, I, I really want to thank Sister Vanessa. She, 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 um, she called my wife. She said, mm -hmm. I'm looking forward for the next program. She, for that spring, she's looking forward. She says she, she like, she can't wait. You're you know, excited. She, yes, yes, yes. So um, as we are about to start, let me just say a word of prayer. Yeah. Heavenly Father, indeed, we we'll give you thanks and praise so many blessings. Thank you for life. We thank you for strength. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord Father. You say that any man lack wisdom acts of you, and you give it to all men liberally and unbreeded not. You said even the spirit of prophecy said that plainly that you'll give us not just, just about um, the gift to understand physical thing as well as spiritual thing, Lord Father. So we, Lord, we all this morning come asking for your Holy Spirit, Lord Father. This is the greatest gift that you want to give to man. You say, ask and it shall be given. Knock and you shall seek and you shall find. And you want to give us your Holy Spirit, Lord Father. So be with us this morning as we search your word, Lord Father. You say, search the scriptures, Lord Father. I pray that you'll continue to be a brother spring in a special way as you present your word, Lord Father. Put your words in his mouth, Lord Father, that when he speak, it will be his words. Be with him. Each one of us, Lord, I pray for all those who are listening on Facebook, Lord, continue to guide them, continue to lead them. They say that we are living at a time, Lord Father, that we need to know truth. And Lord Father, the only truth can set us free, Lord Father. You say that who the Son of God has set free, he is free indeed, Lord Father. So all of us need to be set free, free from sin, free from the things of this world, Lord Father. Help us, Lord, that we will continue to consecrate our life to you. You know the name, but in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 So, without, without further delay, we want to um, hand it over to Brother Springer to take, to continue the, um, the, study. the study. Amen. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here to share. Good morning. Good morning. As we share, we will learn. I will learn, and you will learn. Amen. And as we go through these, um, as we go through this study, we will learn more, and we'll appreciate God's word, and we'll get to know when these events would take place. Uh, I haven't given us any specific date or time when the probation would close, but it has given us some specifics that we can work with, all right? So um, I just want to clear up. Um, we mentioned about the death of Moses. Before I pray, I just want to clear up this. We mentioned the death of Moses and we read from verse uh, chapter 32, 
sorry, chapter 34, verses 5 to 6. But in order to get the full context of the conversation between God and Moses, you have to read from um, Exodus, sorry, uh, Deuteronomy 34, verse 1 to 6. And you would see there where God spoke to him and told him that he wouldn't be able to enter into the promised land. All right, so that's one thing that we have to clear up. But before I continue, let's uh, have a word of prayer. Loving and eternal Father, we thank you for your word whereby we can study once more. We ask the presence of your Holy Spirit to teach us and to guide us. We read each and every one of us who on the line we pray. I give thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So before I continue, is there any question based on part one? Based on what we have discussed on Tuesday. Is there any question? or so that need to be cleared up. Maybe something, I said something that didn't sound so right. So um, if you have heard anything, now is the time to mention it. All right, so I believe there's none. At the end, we can, we can ask some questions and so on. So now we're going to part two. We have left off last Tuesday concerning where we saw that we saw the significance of sitting and standing. And we observe from certain texts that when Jesus stands, when the Bible says in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1, that Michael and Michael shall stand up, we see that that standing up means that judge that, that probation is closed. We saw that with Stephen in Acts chapter 7. All right, verses 55 to 60, um, where he saw Jesus standing and probation for the Jews was closed at that time in AD 34. We also observe that sitting is when Jesus is interceding or um, doing, his, um, doing his investigative um, judgment as the priest, high priest in the sanctuary above, all right? So now we go to part two, we're gonna continue there. We want to just read um, Daniel chapter 2, sorry, Daniel chapter 12, and verses 1 and 2, so that we can just continue in a nice, smooth transition. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn there. Daniel chapter 12, and it says, and at that time, shall Michael stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, since there was never there was a nation, even in the time, in even to that same time, and at that time the people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book, written in the book. All right, and verse two says, and this is our this is where we're going to center on in verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame and contempt. So we see here that just when Jesus stands up, that probation was closed, and sometime thereafter, sometime when the plagues begin to fall, we understand by these texts that there will be a resurrection. All right? So this standing up marked the close of general close of probation, of human probation. Mercy no longer um, lingers on. The door that was ajar will be closed. So when probation closes, then the great time of trouble, the time of Jacob's trouble begin and the seven last plagues also begin. I think when you go to Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse, I think, five to seven, you also see there a time of trouble. So you can just mark that. We're not going to go there, but you can just take that down. I will have to include it. I, I didn't include it. So it's Jeremiah chapter 30, verses five to seven. You'll see something there mentioned about the time of Jacob, Jacob's trouble. All right. So now we look at verse two. All right. Probation closed. According to um, Revelations 22 and 11, Right? This is where the announcement that probation is closed. And, and it says in Revelation 20 and verse, Revelation 22, 
sorry, and verse 11, it says, and he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Meaning that there is no more, there is no more change. The door of salvation is closed, right? Whatever um, character you have at that point in time when Michael stands up, that is the character that you're going to take down to the end of the human history on this earth, all right? So let us read um, another text that tells us about the close of probation. Let us read uh, Revelations 15, right? Where it begins there with the announcement of the seven last plagues. So we go to Revelation 15 and verse one, and then we're going to go to verses six to eight, all right? Revelation 15 and verse 1. And it says, And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them are filled up the wrath of God. All right? So that's the introduction of the seven last plagues. Now let's go to verse 6 to 8. We'll tell, we'll tell us about there is no more mercy anymore. Verse six says, verse six of Revelation 15 says, and the seven angels came out of the temple having seven plagues clothed in pure and white linen and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God who liveth forever and ever. And notice verse eight. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was, was able to enter therein. No man was able to enter the temple till the seven last plagues was fulfilled. So we see here, no man was able to enter the temple because why? Probation is closed. And, 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 and it says here, till the seven last plagues is fulfilled. All right? So probation is closed. And this is what this text is saying. And so the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, it says, let us therefore come boldly, right? Unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in the time of need. So now is the time. Now is the time for us to make sure that our feet is standing on solid rock. Now is on solid ground. Now is the time for us to make sure that our Christianity is based on the rock Jesus Christ. Um, second, second Corinthians verses six. Sorry, Second Corinthians chapter two. With, sorry. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 2 says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. All right? So after probation closed, there is no more salvation for no one. Right? Why? Because probation is closed. Um, you may hear people um, talking about the rapture and when the church is raptured, then the church, then the people on earth the unrighteous is going to go through seven years of tribulation and all of that. That is erroneous, all right? That is not song doctrine at all, but that's another topic for another time, okay? But the question is asked, who would the plagues fall on? Well, we know, from, not even from reading the Bible, we know that the plagues will fall on the earth, it's going to fall on the unrighteous, all right? So, Let's see that answer in Revelation 16, verses 1 and 2. Revelation 16, verses 1 and 2 is going to tell us who the place is going to fall on. All right? We, this is not no guessing game, you know? It says here, and I heard a great voice, reading from Revelation 16, and verse 1 and 2, it says, and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out your vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. 
and the first went and poured out upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon which and which worship his image. So the 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 the, the place is going to fall on those who have the mark of the beast and those who worship the image. All right? So that is clear. So in Daniel chapter 2, we read that before. Daniel chapter 12, sorry. There are two groups of people that are mentioned. Two groups of people. Two groups of people. Some to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame and contempt. This means that contempt means that they are worthless. They are worthless. They are worthless. They have nothing in them because they were not connected to Christ. They did not build their Christian uh, lifestyle on the rock Christ Jesus. So they are worthless. All right. Uh, Revelation 7. Sorry. Revelation chapter 1. And verse 7 tells us, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kingdoms of the earth shall mourn, shall wail because of him, even so, amen. Those who took part in putting him to death. This is what it means that pierced him. Now, people get confused with this, this text, right? Especially when it says, they that pierced him. Now, this can be applied to the second, the second, uh, the first resurrection when Jesus comes, and it can apply to this context here where we study in the special, um, the special resurrection because it's speaking about those who directly pierced him, all right, would would rise up in everlasting shame and contempt to see Jesus. Yes, what he has said and what the prophecy says, it is so. All right. So is that is that clear when you speak about and they that pierced him? Those who were directly responsible for, for Jesus' death, Caiaphas, all right, Pilate, and others that were responsible, directly responsible for his Judas, all right. And there are some, there are some Christians, high-ranking Christians who have deceived people, all right? Who have been deceiving the whole world, who have been deceiving people, some of them too would, would be resurrected here to see, yes, that Jesus is the Messiah and that he is the son of God, all right? So those people who are directly responsible for his death would be resurrected here in this partial resurrection, which is says that, um, and they also which pierced him. All right. So, any questions there as we go on? Okay. So now we're going to ask the question. Yes. Someone want to ask a question? Yes. Shakira have her hand up. Shakira, what's up? Good morning. So I have a question. So you said. There's a special resurrection. So mm. if there's a special resurrection and you had mentioned those who are um, pierced Jesus will be resurrected. So you're telling me that God is gonna come, Jesus is gonna come a third time for those who are supposed to be in the second resurrection? No, he, he will come a third time, yes, but he's not coming in this special resurrection. The third time that he comes back, as in Revelation 20, is to is to is to um, carry out the executive judgment. But at this special resurrection, Jesus would not come. So I thought the executive judgment would be for a dole, for all the wicked, which he had talks about. Because I, I mean, I've heard, yes, yes, heard of that before. Yes. Um, um, I never really read that, even when I read um, in Sister White. Yeah. Um, books where she talks about the second resurrection so mm. I never really heard that before so what I'm saying is that if Christ come um, one, two, three times how is 
how is that possible? Okay, let me clear that up. In this special resurrection here, Jesus would not come. In this resurrection here that is spoken of in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 2, Jesus is not coming. He's coming at the second, his, his coming will be, his second coming would be at the first resurrection. And you can get all this in Revelation chapter 20. It, it, it is said there that he is his second coming, which is the first resurrection. And then there will be a third resurrection of all the unrighteous, millions of them. And even these same people who pierced him. All right. And then after the thousand years, when he comes back, then all these dead people, millions of them, the unrighteous would be resurrected. All right. So yes, Jesus would come back at another time, but he would come back after the 1,000 years. And you get that in reading uh, Revelation chapter 20. But in this special uh, resurrection, he's not coming uh, physically to the earth because it's so, not indicated here. Okay, so is he sending someone else to come to resurrect those people? I'm kind no, of in this special resurrection, Jesus does not have to come. Why? Because he's a, he has infinite power. And that's why it's called the special resurrection. He has infinite power and he could stay anywhere and resurrect people. But the second time when he comes, all right, the second time when he comes, people would see him, right? This is what the, the scripture says in Revelation chapter one and verse seven. It says, all I shall see him then, not now in the special resurrection. But I'm trying to ask, where does it talk about? Because I only heard about two. I never heard about three. So I'm trying to figure out how did that even come in plain scriptures? All right. If you read that uh, Revelation chapter 20, and we read that before. All right. If you want to go there, let's go there. Revelation chapter 20. And I'm going to read verses five and six, all right? Okay. You can read from verses one to five to six for just, you know, I'm just going to read five and six. So you can read it verses one to six just for context sake, all right? But the space of time don't want to be too long. And here what it says, or let me read from verse four rather. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and the judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither received their mark, his mark upon their foreheads or in their, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So this, is talk, this, this verse 4 here is talking when Jesus comes the second time, all right, the righteous would be raised and taken to heaven and partake in the judicial judgment for a thousand years. This is what it's saying here. But the rest of the dead, listen to verse five. It says, but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years was finished. This is the first resurrection. So the first resurrection is when the righteous are being resurrected and taken to heaven to spend 1,000 years, all right? Verse six says, it says, blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. On mm -hmm. such the second, the second death had no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with Christ a thousand years. And verse, verse 7 says, and when the thousand years are expired, Satan will be loosed out of his prison. All right. So here is where you get. Um, let's, let's go down again. Let's go down. Um, let's go to verse 8 and, and shall go out to deceive God. It said that when Satan is, is resurrected, he shall go out to deceive He'll, all these people. Gog, may Gog will be, gather them together for battle. All right. And they that went up from the breath of the earth and come past. And, okay, let's see that. And verse 10 says, And the devil and the seed was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, uh, where the beast and the false prophet and all shall be tormented day and night. And I saw the great white change. So, okay. So after the 1,000 years, Jesus and his saints, and you, 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 
you, you also get this in Zechariah chapter 14, all right, where it says that Jesus would descend with his saints on Mount, on Mount uh, Olives and the mountain will split asunder, all right? So this is here, this is where Jesus comes back here the second time or the third time because he came the first time as a man and then he's coming back here the second time in the first resurrection as king of kings and then he's coming back the third time after the thousand years to, to execute the final phase of judgment. So you have to read Daniel um, Revelation chapter 20 together with well, Zechariah. I understand what Revelation 20 is saying about the first resurrection, those who are in Christ, yes, shall rise. The second death is for the wicked. And I know about right. the binding of the, the enemy for, and then he would be loose trying to deceive, which will be no one on earth. I understand that. Right. Right. But um, that would be the time when Jesus come to cast him and to destroy the devil. So right. that, that would be, that to, would be Mm -hmm. to the to a third it would be a third resurrection at all um, it no would just, it would be the it would be the second resurrection um, which is spoken of in john chapter 5 verses uh 28 and 29 when i speak about though there will be a resurrection of life and there is a resurrection of damnation there's two resurrections there the first resurrection is spoken of in um Revelation 20, verses 5 and 6, and then after the thousand years, then the, the unjust, the unrighteous people would be resurrected. And that's the time when all the unrighteous people, included um, the devil and his angel, would be cast into the lake of fire. But if he's bound for a thousand years, mm -hmm. after Christ bound him, where would be those unrighteous people? Because they would, they would have died in the second death yeah those unrighteous people are dead all of them are dead right but they will be risen they will be they have they will be resurrected to face the final phase of judgment when you read in That's thessalonians the king, the, the new Jerusalem, right? yeah when you read in second thessalonians chapter 2 i think it verses 8 to 10 where he comes and he says that um, the unrighteous will be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. So when Jesus comes, the when Jesus comes the second time, right, all the righteous would be resurrected, and those who are living, those who are unrighteous, would be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. So all the unrighteous people would be dead. When Satan is being bonded. Is 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 a, 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 a situation of circumstance, which means that he has no one to tempt. Right. So after the thousand years, then Jesus returns with the saints, and you see that in Zechariah, all right, chapter fourteen, I believe. Even though that they're piercing on sin, because that would happen when he comes the third time. Brother Springer, morning, 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 morning everybody. Morning. Um. In regards to the, I'm think I'm hearing someone. What, their mic was on, right? Morning. In in regards to the um, well, the the section with the the resurrection is clear. The first resurrection and the second resurrection. The first resurrection is for those who are the righteous dead, who right. are in the grave. Absolutely. And the second resurrection is for the wicked who were dead for the thousand years and now they're yes. getting right. judged. That's clear. Yes. Um, but, so just now, before you go on, let me ask Sister uh -huh. Charlene. Sister Charlene, is that clear for you now? Oh, it means Sister Shakira. I have to read up a more, oh. um, more about that because I'm just kind of not understanding okay. about why, where the third resurrection truly comes in. All right. The, this, no, this would not be a third resurrection. This, as it says here, when you read, it says here, is, is a second resurrection. Look in verse 6 of chapter 20 of Revelation. It says, blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. And such the second, right? The second death had no power. 
for they shall be priests and go of God and of Christ and shall reign with Christ a thousand years. You see, when you look at prophecy, when you look at revelations, it's not written in chronological order. That's why the scripture tells us that we have to study precept under precept, line under line, here a little and there a little, in order to get the pieces together and understand about topics like this. All right? So um, you can read that, and uh, this is the way it speaks about the first resurrection and the second resurrection. This, this special resurrection is not a first, it's not a second. Why? Because there is no, there is no gap in the special resurrection. That's the difference between the special resurrection and the second and first resurrection. There is a gap between the second and the first resurrection. All right? Can I say something? Yes, sister. Um, remember, our whole conversation is circulating under the quotation, Ellen, um, early writings, page 285. All right. Five, right? So it says here, and I just want to read it. Mm -hmm. Because this have my mind thinking also. Because I you I I was thinking before. Okay, first resurrection, second resurrection. I know based on reading um Revelation one seven that they will have a resurrection also with the wicked who will see Christ coming right. But this quotation says it was at midnight <coughs> that God chose to deliver His people. Mm -hmm. As the wicked were mocking around them, suddenly the sun appeared, shining in his strength, and the moon stood still. Dark, heavy clouds came up and clashed against one another, well, each other. But there was no, there was one clear place of settled glory. Whence came the voice of God like many waters. She taking the heavens and the earth. And here this part, it says, there are a mighty earthquake. There was a mighty earthquake. The graves were open and those who have died in faith under the third angel's message, mm -hmm. keeping the Sabbath. Now this, this right there and then, it tells me, I asked myself this question. Mm -hmm. Did all the righteous died under the third angel's message? And did all um god's people kept the sabbath no yeah no, exactly and the answer yeah. is no right true so, sister white specifically yeah say, telling us something here that hmm. they who have died under the third angel's message who have kept mm -hmm. the sabbath came forth from mm -hmm. their dusty bed she did yeah. not just say we will get to that part yes oh uh, oh okay so I'm, we will get okay. to that part. Just but I just want to keep what I was saying. So I think yes. just bringing back up the quotation right. will, will help you. Yeah. yeah, we will get to that part. But the first part that you read here is speaking about at the end of the seven plagues. When you talk about here, at, it was at midnight, the darkest hour of Earth's history. Because remember now, the, the, one, the, the, the those who are sealed who are going through the seven last plagues, all right, they will, all earthly support would be cut off, all right? All protection will be cut off. They would not die because they are sealed. And so this is in the, in the, in the, at midnight when the wicked would come now to destroy them, when the decree goes out to destroy them. So this is where there's representation here of that um, when, probation, when um, the last plague is finished. All right. I think so, Hilda, so, also what uh -huh. kind of, I think showing off people is the word resurrection. Yes. So, yeah. And that is why I love how you lay the foundation mm -hmm. saying that there were many other resurrections in the Bible. Right. Right. So I think the word resurrection, because we so accustomed hearing about the first resurrection and the second resurrection generally. Mm -hmm. So the word resurrection kind of showing off every, every well persons who are a little confused and i could understand yeah. that but yes. let's just keep in mind when it was laying the foundation concerning there were others who were resurrected in the bible all right like, so let us let us clear some here some questions and let us get this clear up as we go on because if we don't clear up this point you know it'll be kind of difficult for people to understand 
as it goes. I think Sister Ronda wanted to say something. Sister Ronda, are you there? Morning. Um, I wanted to say, because I, 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 I was studying this over the weekend and I had discussion with my pastor. And right. what he explains to me, the, the Bible only speaks of the two resurrection. And he right. says, he knows that there is a special resurrection. He said, but the mystery of God does not specify the timeline for this, the timeline the timeline for the special resurrection because he said we don't know if that special resurrection will come the the time when jesus come and those people at the second resurrection um so that was kind of um to me i am clear with the two resurrection the first one for the righteous the second for the 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 giving the the judgment to the wicked but when this the special resurrection will take place there's not a timeline for it so um just okay. just thinking listening as, to you as as we go on to the end you will see that there is a timeline the bible and the spirit of prophecy specifically says when this special resurrection will take place as we go on all right I'm very sad to hear that your pastor says this, but we cannot take pastor's word. We cannot take my word neither. Anything I say here that is wrong, I want you all to reject it. But anything I say, I will try by God's grace to prove from the word of God and the spirit of prophecy. All right? So my sister, do not take anything that your pastor say. Do not take anything that I say. You take what God say and what the spirit of prophecy says. So as we go down to the end, all these questions is going to clear up, all right? I think there was a brother wanted to ask a question also. I think all right, let's... With someone in the background. Okay, all right. So let's continue now. Okay, now we're getting into some timelines here now. Which righteous would come up at the special resurrection. Here's the question. And here's a timeline. Which righteous would come up at the special resurrection? Let's go to Revelation chapter 14 and verse 15. Now, Revelation chapter 14, it is in a sort of chronological order. From verses 1 to verse 5, you have the 144,000, right? Verses 6 to 12, you have the 144,000 preaching the three angels' message. Let us get that chronology in our minds. And you can see it here in the Bible. This is not me saying it. It's the Bible. I'm just saying what the Bible says. Now, let's go to verse 13. As I said before, you know, we as Seventh-day Adventists, we don't just take things like that. We look at words. We look at phrases, phrases that have been, you know, um, stated it in the Bible. So we have to look at words. We have to look at phrases. Now, in verse 13, hear what it says. Verses 6 to 12 mention the preaching of the three angels' message. Angels' message. Verses th verse 13 says, of Revelation 14, it says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, John is speaking here, Right, blessed are they which die in the Lord from henceforth. Henceforth of what? From henceforth of the preaching of the third angel's message. All right? This is what does henceforth mean from the preaching of the third angel's message, right? Ye, from henceforth, yea, saith the spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Let's read this verse again. It says, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Henceforth of what? Henceforth of the preaching of the third angel's message. 
All right. Now, let's continue. So henceforth here is mentioned here. You say, keep in mind that the resurrection here is not the first resurrection, nor is it the second resurrection. It's a special or partial resurrection. Therefore, from henceforth, from when? It means henceforth or preaching of the third angel's message. And we're gonna see as a quotation as Sister, Sister Christian read there, a quotation from the spirit of prophecy. All right, so um, let me go see. I'm gonna run off myself if I, if I um, let's read that quotation and then we'll continue. I'm gonna read that quotation here as Sister Chris has said. I have it written here, but I don't want to go down to my notes. I'm gonna skip something. So reading from early writings, page 285. Early writings, page 235. Early writings, page 235, paragraph 285. one. 285. Huh? 285. 285, yeah, 285. the of the saints. Not 235, 285. 285, that's what I said. Sorry. 285. Yeah. I'm not going to read from the, from, the, from the beginning of the paragraph because that is talking about um, at the end of the seven last plays when God delivered his people. All right? I'm going to read from there was a mighty earthquake. All right? There was a mighty earthquake. Graves were open, and those who had died in faith under the third angel's message, keeping the Sabbath, came forth from their dusty beds, glorified to hear the covenant of peace that God was to make with those who had kept the law. All right? All those who die in the faith of the third angel's message. We know that the preaching of the third angel's message begin from, uh, you could say, 1844, 1840 to 18, from, from 1844 or 1840 coming right back up. But it is then in 1846 that the, the, the people of God, our pioneers, received the, trouble, the Sabbath truth. So we can rightly say from 1846, all those people who died under and understanding and practicing the, 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 the third angel's message, especially the Sabbath, they come forth in this special resurrection. They would come forth. So Sister White would be there, Joseph Bates would be there, um, uh, all the pioneers would be there, and all of us who have kept the truth of God's Sabbath would be in the special resurrection. Now, let me say this, that is not all Seventh-day Adventists would be resurrected in this special resurrection. Not all is those who are true to God's Sabbath, those who have been keeping it in the true sense of the way that he meant it to be kept. Because let me read in Great Controversy, I'm going, off my, going ahead of myself here, but it's in the, um, it's in the notes. In Great Controversy, Chapter, what chapter is it? Great controversy, page 608, it says, as the storm approaches, right, a large class who had professed faith in the third angel's message, but have not been sanctified to obedience to the truth, abandon their position and join ranks with the opposition. By uniting with the world and partaking of its spirit, they have some to view matters in nearly the same light. And when the test is brought, they are prepared to choose the easy and popular way. So it is not all Seventh-day Adventists, it is not all Christians who profess to keep the Sabbath would end up in this special resurrection. Only those who are true and keeping the Sabbath in the true sense. All right, so we see here, when I, when I go down, there's another quotation that brings this out a little clear. All right. So we see here that sometime when, prob when, when probation closed, sometime within the seven last plagues, that the special resurrection would take place. Sometime. And so the Bible and the spirit of prophecy is going to tell us exactly when. All right. 
Okay, let's go to Job chapter 38. Job chapter 38, and we're going to read from verse 22 and 23. Okay, Job 38, and I want to read from verse 22 and 23. And listen to what it says. Hast thou entered into the treasury of the snow, and the treasures of the snow? Or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail? I want you to notice that word, hail which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and of war. So it is telling us here that there is a, there is a period, there is a, 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 a plague, and that plague is hailed in the time of trouble, right? We know that in the time of trouble, the seven last plagues is gonna fall. Here it is, it, it is pointing out that at the hail, the time of the hail plague, we will see that, all right? So now what time, what time is the time of the hail? Let's go to Revelation chapter 16, where we read before the beginning and the, introduce, and the introduction of the seven plagues. Revelation, let's go to Revelation 16. Revelation 16. And verse 17, Revelation 16 and verse 17, it says, and the seven angel poured out his vial into the air. And there was a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. And the seven plagues. So when we go to, you see that the seven plagues, Let's go down to 18. And there was voices and thunders and lightning, and there was a great earthquake, and there was not since men were upon the earth and a mighty earthquake. All right. So we see here that this seven, this seven, the seven angel poured out his vial into the air with a great voice out of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. All right, let's. Let's look at another text. Let's look at Great Controversy, page 33, sorry, Great Controversy, page 636 and paragraph three. Okay, great, great controversy, page uh, 636 and paragraph three. Hear what the, 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 the woman of God says. It says, great hail, everyone about the weight of a talent are doing their work of destruction. And she quotes verses um, 19 and 21. Let's see what that says, verses 19 and 21. It says here, and the great day are divided into three parts in the cities of Babylon, and 19, what is it? 1921. And there fell upon a man a great hail out of heaven, every stone over the weight of the talent, and men blasphemed, and the cause of the plague of the hail, for the plague there was exceedingly great. So we see here from verses 17 to 19, it tells us that the seventh plague is the hail. All right? So here is Sister White to say now, great hail, everyone about the weight of a talent are doing their work of destruction. And she quotes uh, Revelation 16, uh, 19 and 21. The, product, the, the proudest cities of the earth are laid low. The lordly palaces op upon which the world's great men have lavished their wealth in order to glorify themselves are crumbling to ruin before their eyes. Prison walls are rent asunder. God's people who have been held in bondage of their faith are set free. 
So this here is talking about the special resurrection. Let me try to go down to the end and then we're gonna ask some questions, all right? Here is Great Controversy, page uh, 637 and paragraph one. Great Controversy, page 637 and paragraph one. We have identified that the hail is the seven plagues in Revelation 16, uh, 17 to 19. All right, now Sister White is commenting on Daniel chapter 12 and verse two, and also she's commenting on, these, on this hill. Here she says, graves are open. This is Great Controversy, page 637 and paragraph one. It says, graves are open, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and contempt. And she quotes Revelation, sorry, she quotes Daniel chapter 12 and verse two. The order says now, all who have died in the faith of the third angel's message come forth from their tomb glorified to hear the covenant of peace, to hear God's covenant of peace with those who have kept his law. They also which pierced him, those who mocked and derided Christ, died agony. And the most violent opposers of his truth and his people are raised to behold him in his glory to see the honor placed upon the loyal and obedient. Okay, so here we've seen that the, the, the special resurrection is going to take place at the seventh plague, right? Just before Jesus comes, because the seventh plague is the last plague that will fall upon the earth upon the unrighteous. Okay, let me continue. This is Great Controversy, page 640 and paragraph two. It says, the voice of God is heard from heaven, declaring the day and hour of Jesus' coming and delivering the everlasting covenant to his people. Now, picture on your mind, probation is closed. The 144,000 is sealed. And at the seventh resurrection, at the seventh plague, which is the hail, right? Just before Jesus comes, you have all these people who have died in the faith of the third angel's message. They are not part of the 144,000, but they would join this group, right? And they would hear the covenant of peace that God is going to pronounce. All right, let me continue to read. It said, like pearls of loudest thunder, the words roll through the earth. The Israel of God stand listening. The Israel of God stand listening with their eyes fixed upward. Their countenances are lighted up with his glory and shine as did the face of Moses when he came down from Mount Sinai. The wicked cannot look upon them. And when the blessing is pronounced on those who have honored God by keeping his Sabbath holy, there is a mighty shout of glory. Okay. So we see here at the seventh plague, just before Jesus comes, we see a group of people that will be resurrected. We also see that there's a group of people as according to Daniel chapter 12 and verse two, there's a second group of people who would come up and those are the ones that pierce people. Not all of them, just some of them, right? Who were directly responsible for Jesus's death. Now I'm gonna read you something as we go into another piece, another principle. In John chapter 12, verses 28 to 29, Jesus says this word. It says, Father, glorify thy name. Then came a voice from heaven saying, I have glorified thee and will glorify thee again. And the people therefore, and the people therefore that stood by and heard it and that it thundered, others said an angel spoke to him. Now the people now, the, the, the unrighteous people who are on the earth at that point in time when the special resurrection takes place. All right? 
All right. When that, when that takes place, when that takes place, I'm I'm hearing an echo. I'm hearing an echo. Someone has their mic Someone on. Let me see if I can look at it for you, brother. That could be me. No. Yeah, um, no one has their mic on. So. Okay, let me go down to the end and then we will open up for some questions. So what this text is saying here, John chapter 12, verses 28 to 29 is saying that when the people hear this covenant of peace, and we'll go down to a quotation that says that, they, would, they wouldn't hear the voice of God because they would think that it's thunder, but it's only the righteous would hear the voice of God and they would hear the day and the hour that God pronounces the day and the hour of Jesus' coming. Let's go to this quotation. And this is early writing, page 14 and paragraph one. It says, soon we heard, soon we, this is Sister White speaking. And this will give us an indication that she herself knew that she was going to be amongst this, this special res resurrection, because she said, soon we heard the voice of God like many waters, which gave us the day and the hour of Jesus' coming. The living saints, the 144,000, knew and understand the voice, while the wicked thought it was thunder and earthquake. So while the wicked thought that the, it, 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 it was thunder and earthquake, because they were not grounded in Christ, you see? They were not grounded in Christ. When God spoke the time, he poured upon us the Holy Spirit and our faces began to light up and shine with the glory of God as Moses when he did come down from Mount Sinai. All right, let me read another quotation that says this. Um, this is early writing, page 15, paragraph one. It says the 144,000 are sealed and perfectly united on their foreheads was written, God, New Jerusalem, and the glorious star containing Jesus, new name. At our happy, holy estate, the wicked were enraged and would rush violently up to lay hands on us, to trust us into prison when we would stretch forth the hand on the name of the Lord, and they would fall helpless to the ground. All right, so there, here is where we, we have it. All right, before I go on to the end, just have like two short quotations to read, which is uh, something that's a little more, not, not different, but um, where Jesus would come from, all right, at the second, at his second coming. But I don't think that is to be in context in this study, all right? So we, we see here, is there any questions? So we can get this clear in our minds. Any questions and comments? Um, I have, morning, I have more of a comment than a question, but I, I, don't want to, I don't want to jump ahead of you, brother. So you know, I kind of wanted to wait to see exactly where you're going so that I don't say something that you were going to say anyway. But, I, but I, there's something that I would like to say though. So I, I mean, at the appropriate time, and it could be now. I don't know. Yeah, you, you could go now because I only have like two short quotations to, to read, which is not really um, dealing with the special resurrection. All right. Um, you know, the first. OK, well, let me let me start by saying I'm good morning, everyone. Good morning. And, good and, morning. and, and, and the first time, you know, well, probably not, not the first time, but the, to me, the very in my mind, the first clear statement, you know, yeah. in the Bible concerning 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 this and, and I, want to, I want i want to say it in context it's not the first statement but to me the first clear statement wasn't actually found in daniel because you remember daniel it was a prophetic book and there were many things in, written in daniel particularly daniel 12 that could have only been understood at the time of the end right and that's why ellen white said to study daniel 12 right but for me, right but for me the first clear statement is when Jesus was actually before the Sanhedrin, right? Oh yes, and um, uh, right. Not to, right? So, not to cut you across, I didn't really put that in. That uh -huh. is uh, Matthew twenty-six verses sixty-two to sixty-four. I didn't really put that in. 
Go ahead, brother. All right. So it says, well, I'm reading from Mark, right? So Mark 14, 62 says, right? This is okay. when Jesus is before the Sanhedrin. Yeah. Okay, and, but right, I mean, but, and, but I, I just trying to, to add a little more so that so that those who are a little confused could see the bigger picture, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, it's Jesus right. said, I understand. I am so so Mark 14 62 says, I am Jesus, mm -hmm. and you will see the Son of Man sitting Amen. at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds <laughs> of heaven. Now, Jesus was speaking to to Kai for Sunday, right? That's who Jesus was speaking to. Yeah. And Jesus yeah. told them that you will see the Son of Man at the right hand of power and mm -hmm. coming with the clouds of heaven. Right. Right now, right. right. So, so just so just to go back a little bit and mm -hmm. take a slight tangent, we yes. have the second coming of Christ. Now, mm -hmm. the, 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 the angels told the, told the apostles in Acts chapter one, what are you looking right. up for? This same Jesus who you see going, mm -hmm. he will come in like manner as he went. Now, right. Jesus went up to heaven with clouds, mm -hmm. in the clouds. So if the angel said, you will see him coming back the same way, then mm -hmm. at the second coming of Christ, he will be coming with the clouds. Oh, yeah. Correct? Yes? Yes, Good. of course. So yes. Jesus Jesus now told, his son, told, told Caiaphas and Sunday that you will see the Son of Man sit at the right hand of power and coming mm -hmm. with the clouds of heaven. In other words, right. they would have to be alive to see Jesus coming yeah right so 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 that's the first inclination we have of right. something going on there because we know that they that they're dead we know that yeah, they're yeah. dead right so now maybe they need you know so so we now get a clear understanding yeah. of how they might be able to see jesus coming with the clouds of heaven Good. right yes now, that is that is correct right now and it's and i'm just going to say this you know right. hopefully all of us on the study believe that the spirit of prophecy is god inspired is, is god inspired word and that right. And that sister white was was the vessel that he chose because right. there's a very very and in the chapter we've been reading the first paragraph in early writings however mm -hmm. that entire chapter is very important for us to fully understand so i'm, I'm gonna so please follow us and I, I, I invite us all to read early writings the chapter deliverance of the saints all all of us right right, right. so so because we would have read the first part mm -hmm. which was uh right there was a mighty earthquake, the graves were open, and those who had died in faith under the third angel's message, keeping the Sabbath, came forth right. from their dusty beds, glorified to hear the covenant of peace that God was to make with those who had kept his law. I just read it quickly because we read it already. Yeah, yeah. Right? You understand yeah. the context. So, right. So we come down and we say, so she goes on to say, the sky open and shut in commotion. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Then it says, then commenced the jubilee when the land should rest. I, show, I saw the pious slaves rise in victory and triumph and shake off the chains that bound him while his wicked master was in confusion and knew not what to do. Why was the wicked master in confusion? Because remember, God's voice would have spoken out of heaven. And as you said, you're hearing thunder, lightning, things going on, commotion. We don't know what's going on. Right? right? Wicked. For the wicked could not understand the words of God's voice. Hear this now. The paragraph right after says in the same chapter, soon appeared the great white cloud upon which sat the Son of Man. In other words, so we have in the first paragraph, we have the mighty earthquake, graves were opened, and those who had died in faith and the is a message, hearing God's voice and the covenant of peace. It goes on to say, soon appeared the great white cloud, which upon which sat the Son of Man, when it first, right, upon it sat the Son of Man, right? So I, I'm, I'm skipping through because I would like us to read it. Yeah, this is page 86 um, you're talking right. about, right? Page Good. 86, paragraph. 286, right? 286 right, so we go down to page 287, 287, paragraph 1. It said now, the earth mightily shook as a voice of God called forth the sleeping saints. So, mm -hmm. But wait a minute. But earlier on we read that it had some people who came forth to hear to hear something special but now further down we saying we see the cloud coming and then the earth mightily shook and and god's voice called for the sleeping saints so in other words when we read this chapter fully we recognize that there are a sequence of events with a group of people who having died under the turn angels matches came forth to hear something special right then the clouds then christ coming in the clouds of heaven he now with his voice the earth will shake and all the sleeping saints will rise 
Now, the other important thing is that remember Christ told his persecutors that you will see the son of man coming in the clouds. Yeah, he was in speaking other words, yeah, he was right. Speaking he was talking to them directly. In other words, yeah. if he, if he, if he, based on what we just read, they would have to be alive to see this cloud coming, right? They would have to be alive even before Christ opened his mouth and the earth shakes mightily to call forth all the rest of the saints. Right, right now, now for me, I don't like to say put, I don't like to say second and third and fourth because sometimes in some people's minds, because they don't have the full picture, it tends to confuse them. Yes. And it tends yes. to cause confusion when we don't have, and I'm not saying this to, to make anybody feel bad because I was no, 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 I was no, at no. this place. I was at this place. You know, it says because because when they say second resurrection, mm -hmm. you saying second resurrection according to your understanding, but second mm -hmm. resurrection confusing me because I know second resurrection to be something else. So that's why, so that's why I, I'm not saying first, second, and third at this point. I'm just going with the events and for us to understand that, wait a minute. Christ told them, you will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. But right. according to right. early writings, before the cloud appeared, there was a group of people raised who heard the covenant of peace. Right. Now, if, now, what we could extract from that is that there would also be a group of people raised who would see the cloud coming who would be wicked. It would have to be because Christ told them that you would see the son of man coming in the clouds. So, right. I mean, and I just put this out here, but I would like us to really go back and read that chapter, Deliverance of the Saints and the Early mm -hmm. Writings. And yeah. then, and then, first of all, before we go even further, cement in our minds the manner of Christ's coming. Because once we right. understand right. that, then we will know where all of these events fit in terms of that whole um, servant plague to, to the end kind of thing and that's just my my submission i hope i really hope i didn't confuse anyone it's, you know but it's just no, no, let's no. just read it a little more yeah you see what what happens there my brother in this chapter we have to understand that in certain verses in certain paragraphs she is referring to jesus's second coming right and then some instances again as she, she's referring like in 285 paragraph i think paragraph one she's referring to the special resurrection that would take place. So we just have to say, as you say, read the whole chapter to get the full context of the special resurrection and the first and second resurrection. And the reason why I say first and second resurrection because it's mentioned in in the Bible in Revelation 20, all right? But thanks, you brother, uh, thanks, Brother Kian, for that clarity. It's good, Thank, thanks very much. Any more questions and comments? Sister Beaton, you can go ahead. Yeah, hi, morning, everyone. Um, I'm glad for this topic because this is something that I never knew before, really. I heard my husband, my husband mention it, but I was never sure about it. Okay. So just bear with me two seconds. I'm taking two seconds to just yeah, get ahead. clear in my ahead. mind because this is what I wanted to know, right? So what I got at the end of the day, that there are two major resurrections based on what the Bible says. You have a first and a second resurrection, which we all know the first is for the righteous and the second is for the judgment of the dead, right? Right. That's good. final, right? According then to John can... chapter 5, verse 28 and 29, and Revelations 1 to 20, Revelation 1 to 6. Right. I have those right. texts written, right? Right. right. Good. I've got those, right? John 12, 28 and 29, and Revelation 20, right? Right. Right. So the special resurrection now will be for um, people like Ellen G. Day who believe in the third angel message, the Sabbath and etc. And they will see Jesus are coming, according to the song. <laughs> right. So they will see Jesus coming. And then we have those who pierce him. They too, I don't know if it's the same time, but they too will see Jesus coming and die again. I remember the dying again, right? Yes, yes. So the special resurrection is for those who kept the third angel message um, and uh, ha ha kept the Sabbath and all of that. For example, like LNG White, they will see Jesus coming, they will rise, see Jesus coming, because what you're saying is that at the seventh last plague, right? After that, they will rise. And uh, then you have those who killed Jesus, and uh, they will see him. But then we will have the first and the second resurrection after that. That is what I got up? Yes. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yeah.
And this is what the spirit of prophecy and the Bible tells us. We just have to put all the pieces together, study it. A lot of us as Seventh-day Adventists, we do not know our distinctive truth that make us the people what we are, that make us the people of God. So there are some things that may appear to be new. There are some things that may appear to be confusing, but individually we have to study it for ourselves. We use all the quotations and texts. And I assure you that when you study it, you'll be able to present it better, and I, better than I present it. You'll be able to get more quotation, more text, and a more clarity as you understand it. The more I, this is the first time I'm, I'm, I'm doing a presentation on this. So the more I, I have learned, you know, from, from our first um, part one, that uh, according to Sister Rhonda, there was a verse that I missed out, which is, Mat which is uh, Matthew 27, verses 54. And that really put everything in context. So as I present, I learn. And as you present, as you study, and as you go over these things over again, you're going to learn. And you will be able to do it better than I am and smoother than I am. All right? So is there may, any more questions and comments? I believe that uh, I, I, Sister Chris might want to end now. Yes, but I have I, one more comment. I'm excited. Here it is. Here it is. And, sure, and, yes. you know, and Sister Beaton said something, but Sister Beaton, I love you. I, I just want to make one slight correction. You said people like Sister White will rise to here. People like us, as long as we are faithful, yes. even if yes. we die, yes. we yes. will, we will hear. Now listen, for me, that's important because hear what? <laughs> even if I die, I will rise and I will stand with the 144,000 and mm. see Jesus coming. I will hear his covenant of peace made with me mm -hmm. and I will see him coming. Right. right. I, I, you know, and, and so we, so we have been... We, we are blessed to live in the time of the sounding of the third angel's message because Amen. we have a very, very special experience, even if, even if we are not part of the 144,000. Even mm, if we are not part of the 144,000, we have a very special experience at, you know, at the end of this history to see Christ coming. Now, are, and, but the thing is, the, <laughs> listen, wow. Go ahead, so, go ahead, I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> You know, whatever so, you say, whatever you say is going to bring clarity to myself and bring clarity to others. You know, so so there are so all who have died died in Christ before they will rise, mm -hmm. but they will not see Christ coming. They will hear His voice and rise mm -hmm. to see Him, but they will not be able to. They will not see Him coming. Just like how and if you, if you go back in the story of Elijah and 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 and, and King Ahab, when he he look in the east and. <clears throat> And you see this small cloud appear as a man hand and it and it getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm. We will be able to see that. We will see that. We did that that it final can. sequence, we will see that. And for me, that's mm. exciting. So let me, I'm going to end here. I don't want to say any more. Okay. We'll take too much time. Yes. It, there is something I wanted to say, but it slipped my thoughts. So, Sister Christian. Amen. Yes, yes, brother. Oh, yes. There's thing that, there's one thing that I wanted to say is that. We see here that those who died in faith of the third angel's message, keeping the Sabbath holy. Now we as Seventh-day Adventists, that's why I say we have a very distinctive truth when it comes to the, 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 the Sabbath. We understand the Sabbath is supposed to be observed and practiced in a specific way according to the word of God. Now Sabbath means rest. Now Sabbath is not only a 24 hour day, Period. Yes, the day is important. It is very important because the Bible says on the seventh day, God blessed the Sabbath day and he rested and he hallowed it and sanctified it and whatever. But the Sabbath really is not only a day. The word Sabbath means rest. So throughout the day, throughout the week, if I am not resting in Christ, right? If I'm not making Christ my plan maker, my burden bearer, and my problem solver, Throughout the week, I cannot come and keep Sabbath in the way that it should be kept. Because Matthew chapter 28 and verse 11, Jesus says, come unto me and I would give you rest. Not that he is resting. He's going to give you rest. Rest from what? From being your own plan maker. Sometimes we, we plan things ourselves and we end up in chaos and difficulty and even death and sickness. All right. We try to be our own sin bearer which is very dangerous. We try to be our own problem solver. And when all of these things should be taken to Jesus and let him handle it, let him lead us. So that my beloved friends, 
This is the true significance of the Sabbath rest in Christ. All right, so we got to make that really clear. It's not all of us as, as Great Controversy page in 608, Great Controversy page 608, it's not all of us who profess to keep the Sabbath will be saved and will be sealed. So we have to make sure that we understand what the Sabbath means. And the Sabbath also means not doing my own works, not trying to save myself from my own works, because it is only God can save us to his justification, to his sanctification. It's only God's work. Those two things are God's work in us. And all we have to do is to make ourselves available and surrender to him. Thank you very much. That is what I want to make clear. And it's very important for us to understand that. Sister Chris, you can go ahead. Okay, Brother Springer, we have a comment on Facebook. She's, well, a question. She said, what about persons who aren't Seventh-day Adventists but has, but has died in Christ but did not get the light pertaining to the Sabbath truth? They also would be resurrected. The Bible says, I think is in uh, Acts 17, 28, somewhere around there. It says that in the time of ignorance, God winked. So if you have not heard the Sabbath truth, God does not hold you against that. But I want to say... Do you know if there will be risen any, any special resurrection? No, no, no. Yeah. no okay. Only those who have died in the faith, according to Revelation 14 and verse 13, and the, the, the quotation that read, only those who died in their faith, observing and practicing and keeping the Sabbath day holy. Only those who have died in the faith of the third angel's message. But there would come a time in the end when this national Sunday law would be made a, a, a law by legislation that I believe that every individual will have an opportunity to know the truth. There may be, I cannot, but to me, right? I may be wrong, but I'm open to correction. Every individual, because this is going to go worldwide, this legislation of Sunday, you see what it's doing with climate change? Every country was represented in COP26, right? All the scientists, the, uh, four days before, 40 scientists and world religions, they signed, they signed an agreement to take to COP26 to COP that yes, we're going to make Sunday a day of rest. I'm just putting it in my own words. Yes. We're going to make Sunday a day of rest. So this thing is going to go worldwide universal. It's going to be law. You see? So yes, if there is someone, if it happens that someone never received the Sabbath truth, they will be resurrected at the second, at the first resurrection when Jesus comes the second time. All right? I think I made that very clear. <laughs> Amen. I want to thank Brother Springer for, for, the, um, for, the, for the study. And we also want to thank those who have commented. We will thank them in a special way. Um, you know, I don't know about you guys, but they tell me it's something very important that this is a time where God is calling us that just as based upon John 4, talking about the our commit and now is when mm -hmm. the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. So now is the time where God is setting up his kingdom. Now is the time where God is calling us as his people that we will study, because it says, study to show ourselves approved unto Ooh. man. Not at all. <laughs> no. Study to show ourselves approved unto God. A workman not to be ashamed, but rightfully divided. So now is the time, friends. Now is the time. Now, if this is not a time for us to, to be going to be called a church people, this is not a time for us to, to, to just say, well, uh, my name is record, um, re recorded in the church manual. Now is that time. You see that those who will want to stand, those who are able to be resurrected in that, that special resurrection, and those who are involved in carrying the first angel message, and not just, not just carrying the first angel message, the three angel message in the brethren. This must be within yourself. Because you could get to, you could say, well, now I, go, I need to go and share the angel message. I just need to, because I want to be resurrected in that special. Mm -hmm. No, it must, you must, it must become part of you. And this is something very important. Even, it's very important for us to understand to know Christ for ourselves, my friends. I'm telling you, it's very important. Because it could get up, it could find itself. Because um, when I read the verse, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, they're talking about, though I speak the 
though I know um speak the, speak the tongues of men, and though I know all mystery and, and have not love, mm. it perfect. So you can know all these things, but not truly understanding love, the love of God, and understanding to know Christ as a person. You can do it, but really now is that time. Now is that time. I assure each one of us. I pray that this 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 study is a, is a, what I call a, a timely study. This is supposed to motivate us. I could tell it motivate me because I don't tell it. I never want to be proud about everything. I, I just, that's why I never study it. I'll be honest. That's why I see my friend, I, I quiet because I don't want to be saying that I have to be involved. I have to talk, talk. No. I, I sit down and I'm listening. I'm telling me as an individual, I need to go and study this and to study more. Not just this topic, but to really know Christ to myself because there are things that I think that I know that I didn't know. But no, I tell you, I started studying God's word. I said, the only time that day, look at simple story that I study. And I just encourage you, that's a story. Yeah, this story. That's from um, John 8, 36. See that. If the son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I, I ask, if you have any time, go and study that text. It's it, this is not just talking about free from sin. It's so deep. This is this, the this <laughs> thing. Every time we hear that, I encourage you, go and study that and into the depths, and you'll see what this does not just free from sin, but you'll talk about you talk about free from this world, free from the things that the God wants us to be free, not to hold on. And you got to understand the kingdom of God that the kingdom of God that what He's setting up here. You got to realize this whole thing boiling down to worship, and God setting up His kingdom while Satan as well is setting up His kingdom. Hmm. So it's very important, friends. As individual, we need to know Christ for ourselves. We need to study God's word more than ever. Very, very important. This is not a time for us to just be going out to, to be church goers. There are too much of church goers that are not Christians. <laughs> too much of us just going to church, just thinking that is it. I could testify I was like that. Just mm -hmm. going to church, going to church. If it's just, if it's just going to church was to save me, I think I should be saved. But I get to realize it's not just, just going to church will save me. But having a relationship with Christ, and that when He call, when He make that special call, He say, "My sheep hear My voice." When He make that call, I should be able to know Him because why? I am spending time with Him, and any call I get, able to answer Him. But if we don't spend time, just like your spouse, if a spouse don't spend time with each other, when when he or she call, because they are not familiar with their voice, they don't even know. Even in that group of people, when they make that special call, that like they didn't know because they never spent time. It never spent time, and this is what happened with us. We are not spending time with Christ. So when he when he made that call, we were not able to hear him. So he's telling us today, friends. I pray that we will commit that we will make a commitment to God, not a commitment to, to rescue the parish. You know, make a commitment to God by His grace that we will develop a a relationship by spending time with Him and to get to know Him as our personal Savior. Let us commit ourselves to God. That let nothing in this world take rob that time that is due to him. So I just encourage and even through the study, it's a timely study. There are a lot of us that I can tell, testify for myself that I heard some new things here. And based upon why, why, why going through it, you can see it, it line up with spiritual prophecy. And I can tell it line up with the Bible. It, it just encouraging me. I need to study more. I need to study more and to know God for myself. So as yes. we pray, as we look to close up, we are spending a lot of time. Yes. I just want to say one thing, Brother B. Um, yeah. I'm going to send, I'm going to send my notes to you all so you can send it to the other folks. All right. Did you hear? Uh, I, go ahead. Sorry. I'm going to send my notes to Sister Chris and she's yes. going to send it to all the other folks. All right. And so, uh, so that Sister Rhonda can see the spirit of prophecy quotation and the Bible quotation where it speak about the time of the special resurrection. And she can study it for herself, go through all the text, look at it for herself, and then she can ask her pastor, what about this? You know? Yeah. Uh, besides asking the pastor, then now she will have, a, you know, like she's studying you now, then she are convinced now and you know, you're going... And how are we doing? Excuse me. Yeah, sorry. Anna, come down. Come yeah. down. And <laughs> now we're going now. Now the intent now is, is about sharing because knowledge have come to you now. Yeah. Not to argue, but to share. Yeah, you want to share yeah. because you can't keep this to yourself. You realize now 
you know, my, anybody, you know, I had a misconception about this. Now I get to know the truth. You understand? So even my wife, have a, um, there's a prayer request, a special, I, I believe it's very special. This prayer request is very special. Um, and, and also I want to thank Brother Keon for his clarity. Kenyan. Yeah. Kenyan, Kenyan, Kenyan. Thank you for his clarity. Amen. Amen. Beautiful, yeah. Amen. Yeah. And also, before I I, I, I go, um, there is the, um, let me go down. Sorry, sorry for this. But, uh, but uh, wait, wait, wait. Sure. Don't talk. Wait, just so this is this is what I can. Don't thank me, you know, because listen, I was right. sitting down there, right, listening to the study. I say, God, this is very important. And as I am sitting down there listening, bedroom, the text copy. came to my mind. Don't right. thank me. I did. Just, listen, listen. Yeah. Before and I have this testimony. Before I logged on this morning, uh -huh. I did not have the words to say and to share what I just shared. Amen, amen. I, I am telling you, as, as you all were speaking and I was hearing the word and, you know, and I, I had my computer up and open and texts were coming to my mind that I was going to them and reading it to make sure that it was lining with what I thought it said and clarity came to me and I shared it. So don't thank me. <laughs> don't thank me. Thank God. You know, thank and, you for and, that. Thank and, you for and, that clarity. And, okay. and, and the testimony this morning is... Listen, the, the, the entrance of that word bring it light. I think so many in the scripture says that. Yes. And the more we read the scripture, the, the more the more we read the scripture. And I, I experienced that this morning. As you read, you just your mind just start to open. That happened to me this morning. Amen, God. Amen. Amen. And, and this is something that go, you know, if you realize what the brother said, you will read certain scripture. And that is why it's important for us to study God's word. Because sometimes we don't grasp what the first. At, at the first time you read it. But if you don't read it, he can't bring back, he said, I'll bring back things to your memory. He can't bring back things that was not there. And as you right. he, he read it, he bring it back. He, 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 what he do, he lighten up what you have to read and you don't understand. He, 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 what he do, he, he, he join the dots, he put them together. I make so much a sense. I say, Lord, you know, all the time I was there, I didn't understand that. And, I, and, and this is the important that each one of us, we need to study God's word. Read, read, read. More you read. Yeah. Sometimes you don't understand at the point of time, but that doesn't make it not, not to read. That is Satan. Satan will come now and depress us and make it, I don't understand this Bible. Let's say make it no sense. But trust me, that's what the brother is saying there. I experienced that for myself, mm -hmm. and that is why I just encourage each, everybody to study God's word because at the point of time, you might not understand it fully. But it's all about time. That somebody will discuss something and the Holy Spirit will bring it back. Because that is his work. That is his work to do that. But no, he can't bring back what is not there. He only could bring back what is or what is what is inside. And he'll bring it back to, the, to our remembrance. So I see sister. Um, that is why. Sister, hands up. That is why it always says to um, always begin a study with prayer. So and ask his presence of the Holy Spirit. I just wanted to read. Daniel and yes, Revelation, yes, the book. Yes, no, brother. I see, I see, I see, sister, and I see she got hands a little bit before. Oh, okay. Right? Sorry about that. Sister Vanessa? Hi, yes. Um, I just wanted to say, um, well, first of all, thanks to God as well mm -hmm. for this study. Um, I think the first one is what um, sort of intrigued me. Um, some of the things that, that was said, I actually went back and I did research, and it made me so excited because studying God's word is so exciting mm -hmm. and studying God's you, word having person you're breaking up I believe and in mind to actually tell this just hope that this could continue you hear me now Yes, we hear you. Can you? Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I was just saying that um, I really hope that this study can continue um, on a week-to-week -week basis and mm -hmm. not stop because it is so close to the coming of Jesus and so much is happening. And the more we can actually help each other to uplift each other is, I think, is so, so important in these last days. Mm -hmm. Yes, what I wanted to say, are you finished, sister? Yes, yeah, Mr. Thompson. Okay. What I wanted to say is that when you read Daniel and Revelation, the book by Uriah Smith, you could read that book, page uh, 349, paragraph two, to page 350, paragraph two. All right. You'll get you'll get the 
understanding there of the special resurrection also. And for those who have God's Care Volume 2 by Mervyn C. Maxwell, right, it's page 81. So those are two historians. Uh, Uriah Smith is more of an older historian, which he goes in detail. And uh, Mervyn Maxwell is a more modern, uh, more modern historian in our church. And he goes through the same thing in page 81 of God's Care Volume 2. And Daniel, and Re well, I'm going to send the notes so they will see it anyhow. Okay, Thank you. Okay, so I'm seeing that we have um, prayer requests. But firstly, let me thank all of you for being here this morning again. You know, some, um, I got up this morning, brethren, and I'm feeling very sick, real, well sick. Mm -hmm. And when I send out, you know, normally I send out, um, good morning all, you can feel free to join us in our devotion. And I saw my sister reply, my blood sister. So that is shining with the C. Amen. I saw my, my sister reply and I said, but wait, I have to come on because I was not planning to come on <laughs> because right now I'm feeling to lie down and cover up. That is what I'm feeling to do right now. And and I, say, you know, all I, the <laughs> I so thank <laughs> God for the opportunity. And, you know, Amen. she's going through something that I, that I know that God is taking, taking her through it because last week she gave birth to her twin, to a twin, oh, oh twin man. girls. Congratulations. Uh, and unfortunately one passed away. Oh, and sorry right about now that. the hospital is telling her the another one is really going through a battle. Oh. So she's asking for prayer, brethren. And okay. She's also pr wanting prayer against depression because in a situation like this, Satan yeah. really try to depress us and to keep us in depression so much till we don't even want to pray. And I really want to thank God, although she's going through her thing, that she made it possible to be here because tell her the other Amen. Day, I want to see my family. My blood relatives mm -hmm. save as much as I want to see everyone else save. So we will pray for that. So, okay. Brother Springer, you will keep that in your prayer request and you will yes. that, okay? And yes. then we have another prayer request from Sister Shakira. And she's asking for strength, battle of mind. So, you see where Satan is trying to, 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 oh, to yes. break us in our mind. That's and we have even Sister Mills, her prayer request always that God will keep her mind and also family issues. Pray to face everything that coming upon, you know, things. We praying for God to strengthen her, strengthen her and that she won't give up. And I think that's a prayer that we should pray for everyone, okay? Everyone. So, Brother Bishop, you can pray for Sister Shakira and Brother Springer, you can pray for my, my sister. Okay. Anyone else, Padre? And also, when, while they're praying, as Sister Vanessa rightly said, that these studies will continue, right? These devotions, these eye-opening studies will continue. So, Amen. Yeah. Amen. So let's pray. So you want me to pray first, Brother B? Yeah, no problem. All right. Okay, let's pray. Loving and eternal Father in heaven, we indeed want to thank you for the time that we have spent under the direction and the teaching of your Holy Spirit. We want to thank you for the time we have spent in your word so that we can see if these things are true. We pray, Lord, that we have studied, that we will go and restudy. Restudy these things, your Lord, to see not only if these things are true, but to make sure, but uh, to have it embedded in our minds through the power of the Holy Spirit. So no one can be able to deceive us and to tell us that these things are not so when the Bible and the spirit of prophecy tells us these things are so. So we pray that each and every one on the line who have been hearing and who have made their comments and who have made contribution, we thank you, the Lord, and we pray, God, that this topic will make an indelible impression on their minds. And, the, and this topic also would strengthen their faith in Jesus Christ. Not in what I have said or what anyone has said, but strengthen their faith in Jesus Christ so that they can make sure that they have solid ground in which to stand on. And that solid ground is the rock Jesus Christ, not the sinking sand. So Father, we want to pray for Sister, uh, sister Christian, sister, sister, 
We pray, O oh God, that you give us strength, that you will comfort us. We know, dear Lord, at this point in time is a battle for the mind, a battle for the mind that controls the whole body to make people depressed and to make people fill up of life. But dear God, we ask that your Holy Spirit would intervene in her life, dear Lord, and speak to her heart and comfort her. And let her know, dear Father, that even though her children die without having uh, uh, been able to, to grow up and be adults, dear Father, they will be saved in the first resurrection. They will be saved. And so, Father, we ask, oh God, that you would bless her and that you would keep her and that you would strengthen her, be it her family, be it her husband, dear Lord, be it all the other kids that she have, dear Father. May you bless her, guide her, and everything that she do, dear Lord, May it be a blessing, not only to her, but a blessing to others. And we pray, O oh God, that you give us strength in this time of loss, in this time of need, in this time of trouble, in this time where the devil seems to be getting to her mind, dear God, and to make us suffer from depression and what have you. We pray, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit will speak to her heart. We pray, O oh God, that you will dispatch a special blessing to her heart so that she can be transformed in her mind, dear Lord, and make it solid, dear Lord, that even though my children die, even though someone who loved me died, dear Lord, I would look, I would press forward for the mark of the high calling of Jesus Christ, dear Father. And she would live by faith. And nevertheless, dear Lord, as Paul has said, nevertheless, I die, dear Father. I live by Christ and the faith that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. May that be her, her, her proclamation. May that be her love, dear Lord. May that be her of every cry as she walk from this moment onward. And so, Father, we ask that you bless her again, that you strengthen her, and may she be a blessing, even though in this time, a blessing to others. For sometimes, dear Lord, it's not about us. It's just about somebody's soul have to be saved. And we thank you that your Holy Spirit encouraged her to be here at this point in time so that she can be able to hear the word of God and, and, and be able to stand firm in the rock Christ Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for all of the other uh, members that go on the line. We ask the Lord that you bless them, that you will continue to be with them and help them to study these things out, the Father. And we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, and our soon coming King. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we continue to linger longer in your presence, Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to do the work that he started in our life, Lord Father. You say that the work that you started, they are more than able to finish it. Once mm -hmm. we allow you to do the work, Lord Father, we cannot do it for ourselves. We need you every day, Lord Father, every hour. We need you, Lord Father, because we know that Satan is like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour, Lord Father. And he's working upon our minds, Lord Father. Mm -hmm. That's why he said that, that anything that is pure, everything that is truth, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, or to think about these things, Lord Father. Help us to spend more time in your word, Lord Father, that we will be able to have that, you say, let that mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Lord Father. So, Lord, we pray for your mind, your character, your ways to be our ways, Lord Father. We pray that we will continue to study your word. You say, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman not to be ashamed, but rightly divine the word of truth, Lord. So I pray for Sister Shakira, you know her situation that she's facing. I yes. pray that you will give her deliverance. I pray mm. that you will take her through it, Lord Father. That even through that situation, we know clearly that the Bible says that all things work together for good for those Amen. who are loved and called by your name. I pray mm. that through that situation that she can see you and that she can realize that you are working, her, working out all to the honor and glory that through that situation, sometimes only through situation, we have been drunk closer to you. So you allow situations to come our way. Because you know sometimes in life, we go about life. The reality is that we go about life without having you in our life. Mm. We go about life that's dependent upon ourselves. But when we are placed in a situation that we realize that we cannot do it for ourselves, that we need you. And that is, I mean, thank you for the love that you have towards us. That agape love that you yes. love us despite of. Amen. Not because that, not because that the goodness of our heart, but because your undying love, you say that while we were yet sinners, you came and died. So, Amen. Lord Father, we thank you, Lord Father, that you don't have a love like how we love. You know, we love because someone do us good, we love them. And they do us bad, we don't love them. But you love us despite of, Lord Father, and you are still open, just as the prodigal son, 
with arms wide open, looking forward for us to come back in. So I pray, Lord, as, as, as your spirit draw her to your draw her to yourself. You say, unless your spirit don't draw, you can't come. So, Lord mm. Father, while we shall hear that voice saying, Come, I pray that you will not continue to harden her heart, but that oh, you yeah. will continue to surrender her all to you, Lord Father. You want all of us or none. You don't mm. want half or 99. What mm. you want is all of us, Lord Father. Amen. Help us Amen. to surrender our all to you and to mm. allow you to do the work in our life, Lord Father. And the end of it, Lord Father, just as Sister White said, that heaven, when we're done, we'll watch it, that heaven was cheap. When we realize that all that we give up is all to the honor and glory, we realize that we could, what we say, what, did, what, in, what could we say, Lord Father? Mm. What more could we do? Mm. Thank you for the work that you have started in our life. I also pray for for Vanessa, for Vanessa Lord Father, that you continue yes. to study Vanessa, that you continue to study your word, Lord Father, mm. and that her life will be a life that once she gain contact with others, that they will see Christ. This is the whole purpose, Lord Father, as Christian. We must have a motivation. What will motivate us to demonstrate your love to others? Because we have recognized how you love us. And that's why I said for John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have mm. everlasting life. So Amen. we recognize what you have done because the love that you was to us. He said that if it was for one sinner, you that came to die. Lord, we pray that each individual will recognize that one sinner is I, that one sinner is you, that one sinner is with Sister Vanessa, that one sinner is, is all those who are here. If it was just for me, if it was just for you, Christ mm. would have come and died. So we need to appreciate what you have done for us. And then in others, you have said that in recommend, they ask us to do. If you love me, keep my commandments. So God, you are demonstrate your love towards us. And you, in other words, you want us to demonstrate our love towards you by keeping your commandments. And then we'll recognize this as, as, as Paul has said. Your commandments are not grievous. We realize that by keeping your commandments, it will bring us in favor both with God and man. So continue to be. Also, Sister Samantha, we see Sister Samantha, Sister Samantha also have prayer requests, Lord. We pray that you will continue to be with her in a special way, Lord. Father, you know her situation that she may be facing, Lord. We all are facing different situation, challenges in our life. And we need to recognize that counted all joy when we fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of our faith work with patience. So, Lord, we pray, Lord, that all through, through all situations, let us see your hands in it, Lord, Father. Let us see why you allow this to happen. I am here in Tobago, and I see that I am seeing time and time we are facing situation, and I thanking you for allowing me to see the situation, allowing me to go through situation. I realize that I think I had patience, but I realize that I didn't have patience because I'm quick to react. I'm quick to complain. But I thank you, Lord, for even us that we are going through a situation that I am able to say, Lord, I'm not going to complain by God's grace. So let us all see that when we are going through a situation, let us not to complain, but let us hold on to that man, Christ Jesus, knowing that he are carrying us through and that he is faithful to take us through. So pray that during the rest of the course of the day, Lord, Father, help us not to fail at every opportunity that you allow people to come our way Help us to tell about your love and that you're soon coming. Continue to guide us. Continue to keep us. You know the name, but in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So, once again, I want to thank all those who are listening. This is the longest we ever stay. <laughs> I, I think it was a, a time that Rel spent. Amen. I enjoy it. I don't Amen. know about you guys. I enjoyed that time. I've learned a lot. But you know, I one thing I was always try to I wish that to accomplish through this program is to encourage each one of us to know Christ for us as our personal savior. That we I, I this is one of the drive the Lord and press on my heart. And that's why I find I keep on saying it over and over. Let us know Christ as our personal savior. Let us study God's word and to Amen. make him our Lord of our life. Read, read, read. Read, 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 read. You might understand read. everything. I tell you something. I don't like to read. No? I'll be honest with you, brother. Spring, I don't like to read. Me but too. I, pray God, I say, Lord, help me to love to read. Help me to love reading. I don't like to read because I'm no big reader. 
So those who may be going through the same situation, I, I can testify I'm not no big reader, but the Holy Spirit helped me and I can help you. So I know what the Holy Spirit do for me. He's more able, he's, and as I always say, as claim it, I say, God, this is your word, you know. This is your word, and you have to help me to understand it because you say spiritual things are spiritually zoned. So therefore, I am asking you to help me to understand your word because it's your word, and you wanted to make it known to me. And so therefore, I, I, I ask, and I know that you wouldn't hide nothing from me. That's why you give me the, your word. So I pray that all, all of us, that it will be a, a drive to study God's word and to know him as our personal savior, that when he make that call, we could be able to answer him. So Amen. have a blessed day, everyone. As so Sister Chris, I'm going to send the notes to you, OK? OK, Amen. thank you. And tell me if you receive it, because sometimes my HP laptop, it don't send out. Yes. They don't send out emails, so I'll use the other one. All right? I'm going to send it to your email. Amen. Shani, we see a comment in the comment. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I, I just want to admonish everyone to study this topic for themselves. Yeah. Sister Amen. Rhonda. <laughs> Have a good day, Sister Rhonda. The Charlene, the Vanessa, Melinda, Dion, Kenya. And all who have left, and even Sister Samantha who's watching. Julia Haywood. GTI mm -hmm. phone. So the next study is next Tuesday. So we study Tuesday and Thursday, same time, seven. Seven here in Trinidad. We following the Pacific time. So that time in your country. Mr. Bonisha wants to know when, what is the next study? <laughs> <laughs> That's the spirit, right? Yeah. <laughs> so this was, um, for some, those who might be first time, it doesn't always go long like this. No, we, we try doesn't to always like try an hour, hour. 15 minutes, so. But um, the spirit lead this morning and you have... I don't know about you, I but I was blessed. Yes, I was blessed. So uh, once again, have, have a blessed day, everyone. God bless you all. Where the kids? Are here in the kids today? Yeah, well, I'm not saying the past. Thank you, guys. God bless. God bless. God bless. Yes, Sister so Shelly. I was feeling that going now. Yeah, bye. That is nice. Right. Paradise. <laughs> Enjoy is nice. Enjoy is a paradise. Yes. yes. All right. Good day, everyone. Have a good day. Okay, bye. Okay, okay bye. 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 Have a blessed day. Bye.